2 Chronicles 7. And beginning with verse number 11. Solomon has just dedicated the temple. It was a wonderful day of dedication. There was shouting and rejoicing going on. And this is what the Bible says. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. And Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard your prayer. I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice and then he says something really strange it doesn't seem to flow in the context when I shut up the heaven and there's no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then when then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sin and will heal their Land. Oh. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. I just feel like reading. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house. Hmm that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually oh whoa Lord open our eyes and ears let the seed fall in good soil let it bear much fruit in Jesus name amen you may be seated together. I do want to welcome the guests that are here. God bless you. Alumni in. Good to see you, Brother Dave. Good to see uh, Ryan was here somewhere. Did I see Ryan? No, not a Ryan, a Shelby. Her last name's Ryan. How oh, she did. Tell her I said she was welcome. And a few others spotted here and there. God bless you. I'm glad to see you. Glad you're here in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to speak to you on the subject. Who are you? And what are you doing? Who are you? And what are you doing? Who are you? Who are you? This passage seems strange that God in the middle of a prophecy a blessing in the middle of declaring to his people I hear you I have heard you says words like when I command the locusts to come huh we're all dancing shouting we just had glory come down. When I shut up the heavens and it doesn't rain anymore. Huh? What are you talking about? When? When trouble and trials come. We're your people, God. What are you doing to us? How could... Preach that sermon another day, preacher. Not tonight. <laughs> but in the middle of God's telling 
Solomon, I hear your prayer. I'm going to attend to it. But you have to understand something. When it stops raining and drought comes, when the locust comes by to devour anything that's green, when all tragedy is let loose, if my people, if my people, who? My people. Who? My people. You got some peeps? He's saying my peeps. If my people, my people, this, this promise is not given to the world. It was not given to the people who had caused the sin to happen in the, in the land. It was not given to the people that had allowed tragedy to come. It was not given to folks that were living in, in wickedness and vileness. It was not given. My people. The problem is my people become so self-centered. That they're not moved by the problems that are in the land. As long as I'm taken care of. As long as me and my house are all right, I don't care. But when the people of God see the need around and about them, if my people, I'm talking to my peeps, people listening to my voice, my sheep know my voice. They follow me. And he said to Solomon, if my people, in the middle of difficulty and tragedy that could come, and why would that all come? Because they forgot the promise. And they forgot the one that dedicated the temple. It wasn't Solomon that dedicated that temple. He prayed a prayer. It was God's presence that came down and dedicated the place. We've, we've traveled over this campus from one end of the buildings to the other. We've been in classrooms and we've been in, in every area of this place believing God to, to pour out His blessing upon us. We've sanctified ourselves. Uh, I told you yesterday, sanctify yourselves. We're about to enter into the presence of God. And, and you and I have done that today day and in the middle of that God says to his people if it ever happens again like this I'm giving you the remedy if my people he's not expecting the sinner man to come in and repent all on his own but my people who my people if my people the ones that are called by my name We want the people causing the problem to get in here and repent. It's not my fault. We want the people that are living vile out there in the world to come in here and get right with God. They need to repent. Sure they do. I believe in repentance and they ought to pray it. But before that's going to happen, if my people, the ones that are called by my name, Anybody ever say you were a Christian? A few of you. Now, Pentecostal scared you. I want to tell you, I'm a Christian. I am a Christian. I go by the name that's above every name. I established a covenant with him. I'm part of his family. I wasn't born into this thing in the natural. I'm not a Jew. But I was born in it in the spirit. I've been born again. I'm a child of the king. I've been called by his name. I told you before about uh, Mr. Blackaby. It's, I'm trying to remember his first name. It almost seems like it was John Blackaby. But, but uh, one of the Blackaby men wrote a book uh, uh, about theology and, and the study of God and his son. He said to his son, son, when his son was first leaving the house to go out on his own to be with his friends, son, i got to tell you something before you leave the house. I've worked very hard to maintain the name Blackaby. It's the, it's the one that my father gave to me. I've done everything I could so when people hear the name Blackaby, they will think of honor and respect. Son, when you step out of the doors of this house and you go out into the world, 
Don't defile the name I gave you to carry. I feel like the Holy Ghost would want you to know I've set you free. I've called you by my name. I've drawn you out. And as you go from this place out into the world, do not defile the name we go by. They may call you a faith schooler. They may call you a, a Pentecostal. They may call you a whole lot of things, but may they always be able to say with distinction, there's a child of God. There's a Christian. There's somebody that's in love with Jesus. There's somebody that's radical about God. We got folks getting radical over football. They get so radical when they win a, 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 a tournament of some sort, be it the Super Bowl, they'll go torch their own town. I got to tell you, that's pretty radical. I just won a great victory day. I think I'll go burn my house down tonight. That's pretty radical. But let it be said of the people of God, they're really radical about God. They have severed the ties with this world. They're not part of this world. No, 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 no. We've been chosen. We've been called out. We have decided to follow Jesus. We've been called by the name that's above every name. And at that calling, we have come and gathered in the woods out here in Charleston, Maine, to declare to the world we will be the servants of the Most High God. And we will call upon the name of the Lord in our time of trouble. And he who hears from heaven will answer our request. Request. Who? My people. Who? Those that are called by that name. That's who he's talking to. If you don't hear a call to prayer, I'd get real nervous. Fasten seatbelt. Going to get a little rough. I've been flying too much lately. I'm sorry. It's. <laughs> I've heard that a few times in the last few few days. Captain's turned on the light. You better fasten your seatbelt. It's going to get a little rough. But I, I want to let you know, if you're not feeling a draw to prayer, I get a little nervous. Because he's calling those that are called by his name. He's calling those that are his people. And if you're not, if your telephone's not ringing, and there's no text coming your way to hit the prayer room, if there's no indication on your email that God's wanting you in the prayer room, I'd get a little nervous. I'd get really nervous about this. If you're just coasting through Bible school and going for the ride and, and your communication system's all broke down and your phone's not ringing and your text is not working and your email's not functioning, I'd get a little nervous about this thing because he said those that are called by my name and those that are my people, I'm giving them some directions. That I'm, I'm pointing in the way of the altar. I'm pointing in the way of the prayer room. I'm calling them to do business for the King of glory. I love worship I enjoy being in the house of God and worshiping with you but he didn't say those that are mine come and worship and I taught you today all about praise praying prayers of praise and entering into his presence with praise but prayer comes to people who know him the call is to pray. The disciples didn't say, teach us another worship course. We like that new one you brought to us last week, Jesus. Teach us another one. And I'm, please, please understand. But they're asking, would you teach us to pray? Because the power to this thing is in a place of prayer. So if my people... The people that are going to change the tide, the people who are going to be the thermostat around here are the people that know the calling of God. And if my people call by my name will hear the voice of God and heed and respond to it, they're the people going to be a thermostat and change the condition of the world they're living in, going to change the position of their, their lives, going to change the atmosphere of their home. 
If my people. Who? I said who? If my people. The ones that are called by my name. Do what? You see, this is a who and a what. Who? That's you and me, the ones that are called. What? Humble themselves. You really cannot pray in a spirit of pride. Can't happen. Can't happen. I'm just telling you, it can't happen. God rejects the proud. But it gives grace to the humble. When you come to God to pray, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Humility says, I can't do this, Lord. Humility says, I'm not big enough, God. Humility says, I don't have all that it takes, God. I know you blessed me with some talents, but I really need the anointing. Now that'll preach. I know you've given me some talents, but it's really going to take the anointing. I'm humbled before you. Because I can't get it done by myself. I'm calling on heaven because I'm humble. I'm praying because I need you. I need you. Prayer. Prayer. You remember the parable of Jesus gave about the two guys came in the temple. One guy's feeling pretty good about himself. Looked over at that heathen standing on the other side. Man, he's doing pretty good. I'm doing all right. I thank you that I'm not like other people, Lord. I thank you that I'm not like other people. I gave in the offering tonight. I'm honoring you. I fasted today, doing pretty good. I'm your, I'm your hand. I'm here to do because I'm capable of doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do great things for you, Lord. The other guy on the other side doesn't even dare to lift his eyes toward heaven with his head bowed. He begins to smote himself on the chest. He said, oh God, oh God, would you be merciful to me? Would you be merciful to me? And Jesus said, who do you suppose had their prayer answered? It was the humble. It was the humble. If you're ever going to intercede, if you're ever going to pray prayers of supplication and intercession, prayers of praise and prayers of penance, it's going to come out of a humble heart. Got to come out of a humble heart. Got to be humiliated in the presence of God. Now listen, there's a difference between being humble and humiliated. Humiliated is what other people do to you. They can humiliate you. Belittle you, make you feel small. Humble is what you do to yourself. I humble myself. I acknowledge in His presence I'm small. I'm but dust. I am unworthy. I'm nothing without Him. And so tonight, we come humbly to pray in the temple. I've said this several times today, but praying long in private. Pray long in private and you can use short prayers in public. Ian Bounds, by the way, was where I got that. I believe tonight, God wants to raise you up with an anointing. So that when you're praying over people in altars, it's not going to take all night a prayer over every individual one. I'm not all for this, just slap them and go, slap them and go, slap them. I I mean, you ought to pray, you ought to pray, but you don't have to pray all night over every one of them. If you've been praying long before, if you've been in the prayer room and prayed it through, when you're going out on outside ministry, I I trust to God you're not waiting until the ride there to do a little praying in the car to get there. I pray there's been some place between that you've got a hold of God. And then it won't take a long prayer in the car and it won't take a long prayer in the altar. But you know that heaven, I like what Elijah said. Elijah comes up to King Ahab and said, Ah, the Lord before whom I stand said to tell you it's not going to rain until I say so. 
How do you you say that with such boldness? Because he recognized first, I'm in the presence of the king. Not King Ahab, the king of glory. I recognize whose presence I'm in. And because of that, I stand to declare the word of the Lord. When you've been in the presence of the king in private, you can stand up in the face of people and dignitaries and all kind of folks in the natural and say to them, thus saith the Lord, because I've been in the prayer room, I've been talking to Jesus, uh, and out of that comes out of your life an essence uh, that you can speak into the lives of people. You're going to need the prayer room. You're going to need the prayer room. You're going to need the altar in your life. May this school be known as a place of prayer. If I ever teach you anything, may it be, you're nothing without him, but you can stay connected in a place of prayer. see my glory revealed for the eyes of the Lord roam to and forth about the earth beholding those whose hearts are loyal toward him that he might show his hand strong on their behalf stay in an attitude of prayer pray always with all prayer and supplication and the Lord your God shall show up for you you shall stand back in amazement of the kingdom of God and its revelation in your world because you have spent time with me, says the Lord. Oh, let me draw you aside this semester. Leave other things to find your place at my feet. And you shall learn that I am all that you need and I'll be more than enough in your life. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who? My people. What? Humble themselves. Pray, pray. Seek my face. Seek my face. There are some people who will tell me, or tell my secretary, I need to see Dr. Bell. When she says to them, he's really busy, could you talk to him on the phone? Sometimes they'll say, no, I just really need to see him. I don't feel like I want to do this long distance. I want to see him. Because what I've got to say, I want to see the facial expression that he has. I want to see the body language in which he receives this. No, 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 no. If all he can do is a phone call today, I'll wait until because I want to see him. There are some of us willing to do a long distance relationship with God. I'll call you when I need you. I'll call you when I want you. But God is saying, I want FaceTime. I want FaceTime with you. And if you'll seek my face, if you'll look for my face, you can tell a lot by my countenance. And when I smile on you, you'll know it's a smile from heaven. And when I frown at you, you'll know exactly what I'm frowning about. I want some face time with you. I don't want a long distance relationship. I'm not just wanting to call once in a while. I want you to seek my face. I'm not settling just to get a telephone call. I'm wanting to come into the Holy of Holies and see the glory of God reveal. I want to catch a glimpse of the countenance of God. Remember what Jacob said when he wrestled? I've seen, I've seen the face of God. I'll never be the same. 
I've seen the face. Seek my face, he said. Seek my face. I pray that something rise up in your spirit and your places of prayer over this semester where you'll get past the little give me list and say, God, I'm looking for you today. I just want to see your face in my life. I want a glimpse of your countenance today. I, I know I got classes to attend and swap to do, but somewhere in the middle of this busy day, I want to see your face coming before me. I, I'm seeking after you. If you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all the other stuff will fall. I want to see you today, Lord. I want to see you. And turn from their wicked way. We prayed some prayers here this morning, first thing. We called them prayers of penance. We were making a petition before God in repentance. Asking for His mercy and His grace. That's the start. But He said it's more than just asking for forgiveness. There's the turning. The turning. The turning. I said the turning. When you're headed in the wrong direction, you need a 180 degree turn to get going back in the other direction. Some people are busy in the turning and they actually do a 360 and they're still going the same way they were. Hello? I turned, Dr. Bell, I turned, yeah. I turned and got a glimpse of Jesus for a moment, but I didn't stop the rotation. Till I came back around to where I was going. The Bible says turn from their wicked ways. We used to sing a song in the church. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. I know that doesn't preach well in today's world. Because we're free to go everywhere. And do anything. But we used to sing about the places I used to go, don't go there. The things I used to say. Uh, somebody going to get a hold of that tonight? The things I used to say. I don't talk that way anymore. There's been a change, a great change. Oh, hallelujah. A great change since I've been born again. I'm living in a new world. I'm acting in a new way. I'm a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. I'm a new creature in Christ. Oh, I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm turning. When I'm turning, it takes... I feel like I'm with my dad and his walker. When I'm turning, it takes a little while. You ever try to get a man turn with a walker? You know, it just doesn't go, shoot. It, it doesn't work that way. You kind of, you start here and you. I've seen some folks turning like that. When they're trying to forsake the wicked way. They're turning. I know I'm supposed to turn. I know I got to turn. I'm turning. Hello? And they're taking a long time in doing it. I want to help you tonight. It shouldn't take us forever to turn. It doesn't mean I'd never slip. It, never, it doesn't mean I never sin. But I began to do something. I understand the only thing that keeps my soul from revival is sin. Regardless what the rest of the school is doing. The only thing stopping you personally from having a revival in your soul is sin. Don't tell me it's because of the people I'm living with. Don't tell me it's because of the school I chose to attend. Don't blame it on the administration. Say if it wasn't for the people that are trying to run this place. Because you're living in a victim mentality when you start that. We are not victims of where we are. He's called us out into liberty. 
You're not a victim of your circumstances. You need to be a victor over your circumstances by the power and the grace of God. The only thing holds me from revival, revival, only thing holds me is sin when I'm headed in this direction. Because revival can happen all the way around me. And I still not have revival. A stirring can happen and everybody else around me, the whole class is jumping up and shouting, teach it, preach it. And I can be sitting there as dead as a doornail. Or the opposite can be true. Everybody in the class hasn't woke up yet. They didn't get their coffee before we started. But something rise up in your soul to say, if they're going to wait till third class before they get involved, let them wait till third class. But as for me and my house, I made a decision. I'm going to have God. I'm going to have revival. I'm going to prime the pump with praise. I'm going to have revival. I'm moving forward for the kingdom. I'm going to have a revival in my soul. In the process of turning, in the process of turning, you're going to need accountability. You're going to need it. Because I've watched... You ever seen the pendulum swing? When you drop it from up here, way over here, and then it's way back over here. Not quite as high, but and not quite as high, but it just keeps swinging until it wears down and it kind of settles down here. I've watched people in their lives get it swinging. And they were radical for the devil. They came in radical for God. And then somebody says, you have liberty. You can do whatever you want to do. And that thing just swings all the way back over here. Until God starts dealing about them and their wicked ways. And then they fall on their faces like we did today. And the pendulum swings way back over here. And then we get in places where, man, there's more liberty than this. We don't have to live so bound up. And, the, and we let it swing again. I, I want to declare to you that when you need some victories in your life, you need accountability. You, you just really need it. I'm encouraging you to get to your mentor. If you found some liberty in this house today, don't let the week go by till you sit with your mentor and say, listen, I was struggling with this and I need some help. I need you to help me build a wall around me. I need you to build some protection in my life because I, I, I don't want to go back. I don't want the pendulum. I don't want the turning to look like this and I keep going the wrong way. Somebody help stop me when I get going in the right direction. Don't let me swing too far out of course. Catch me, hold me, help me. I need your help to be the man of God, the woman of God that God's intended for me to be. Let me encourage you with this. I'm here and I have a program to help, to help folks that have a struggle with the internet. It's a big problem in Christendom today. Huge problem. You're having problems with the internet. We have a program to hold you accountable. I offer it free. It costs a few bucks, but I offer it free to any student that needs it. You can see Brother Misho say, I need that thing on my computer. I, I, I've got it on my phone, got it on my computer, got it on my uh, iPad. It's not an iPad, it's a, it's a tablet. Uh, I'm better safe than sorry. Mine goes to Dr. Peer. He gets to read out every place I've been. He'll say to me, when I call him sometimes, I see you read your Bible today. It showed up on the phone. I was on the internet. He, Man, it's nice when somebody says, I said, yeah, I'm watching you. See, you read the Bible today. Nothing wrong with somebody checking on me whether or not I read my Bible today. You're all convinced of that. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Somebody knows I read my Bible today. What I'm saying is I'm building, I'm building a wall. I'm building a wall. I try to be careful. I'll never drive down the road with just a girl in my car. If you're walking over the hill all by yourself and I'm driving by, forgive me if I don't stop and pick you up and bring you up the hill. 
plan better next time. Get some friends to go your direction. My testimony is too important to me to lose it there, trying to get you a ride over the hill. I, I'm just talking to you, blood. I want to be accountable. I, I want to do the right thing. I don't want to lose my testimony. I want to be among those that can call upon the name of the Lord and see the power of God move. I want to turn from every wicked way. I want to be accountable. Who? What? Humble themselves and pray and call upon the Lord and seek His face. Then! It's not who, what, when. It's who, what, then. It's who, what, then. When you got the who figured out, I'm a child of the King. And the what figured out, I'm going to seek the face of the Lord. Then! There is no shortcut. It's who, what, then. You get the who straightened out and the what straightened out, you get the then. But then I will hear from heaven. I believe heaven's been listening to us today. Now there is a difference. You, you do understand that God hears everything that goes on. Kind of like me watching the news and my wife hollers from the other room. I heard a sound. But that's all it was, was a sound just another sound in the house like the creaking of the floors or the snow falling off the roof it was just another sound I wasn't really listening I was focused <laughs> boy I tell you I've been walking on thin ice all week all week you just wouldn't believe how thin the ice has gotten it might be cold on the inside but I on the outside but I'm telling you the thin the ice has got pretty thin on the inside and I'd let her get a bye with that only because she'd been very gracious with me the last little while. I'll hear not just the rumble of sound, but what he says is I'm listening. I'm listening. You have my full attention. I'm focused on you. It's just not noise uh, being placed in the air. It's not just a rumble of stuff. When you humble yourself and pray, he said, when you do that, I, you got my attention. It's all about you. I'm looking at you. got my full attention. I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. Sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what separates us from revival. Sin is what changes life in the wrong direction. But the power of grace and the love of God and the blood of Christ moves us in a whole other direction. I will forgive their sin. Oh, cheer up, not some of their sin. Not just the parts that are easy to overlook. Oh, I love that part in the psalmist. If you want a sermon to preach sometime, Psalm 103. I call it the benefit package. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquity? Oh, hello, I feel like shouting. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who crowneth thy life with tender mercies and loving kindness? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that I'm renewed like the eagles? I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal their land. The word land is not just talking about the soil. The dirt in the backyard. Not just talking about the garden that they planted. The land was the nation. God would heal the people. We're not just talking about a physical healing. God would heal the people. Do you know anybody need a healing in their spirit? You know anybody that needs Jesus and salvation? You know anybody that needs Christ? You know, I'll heal their land. I'll heal their... We're going to do some more praying here tonight. We're going to pray for a healing of the land. Maine has taken a terrible turn to wickedness. 
But I believe in the power of God and the Bible being true. That if we'll humble ourselves, I'm not waiting for the, for the governor to come in and pray. I, I, I'm just not going to wait un, uh, until the people on the street that don't know God come in and pray. I'm one of his. I got the who right. If I get the what right, then, then I'll heal their land. Revival always, mark it down, underscore it. Revival always starts this way. Always, always, always. I don't care what little town you go to, what hamlet you're pastoring in, what corner of the world God sends you to, what foreign land you find yourself in, the pattern is always the same. If my people will humble themselves and pray, I'll hear from heaven. I'll heal the land. I'm telling you, you're more powerful than you understand tonight. You've got more authority than you're used to tonight. God's wanting to raise you up in this hour. Revival always starts this way. I'm closing tonight. Wow. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. We talked about that word snitch. I told you you're either in the camp of the light, you're in the camp of the righteous, or you're on the other camp. Darkness, hiding, protecting the wrong. There's no middle ground called this is where the I'm not a snitch stand. You're in one camp or the other. And in this Bible school, you're either one of the other. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. I'm standing with, with Joshua of old. As for me and my house, I've already made a choice. I decided I'm going to be part of the solution. I'm going to be part of the answer. I'm going to be part of the kingdom. I'm not standing in the other spot. I'm not part of the other camp. I've made my decision. I've staked my claim. I've drawn a line in the sand. Are you catching me, sister? I'll not be the same with the world behind me and the cross before by the grace of God by the grace of God it's by the grace of God I told you I'm leaning on the grace of God I'm leaning on the word of God I'm leaning on the spirit of God so who are you and what in the world are you doing here who are you can you say tonight I'm his. I'm his. I belong to him. What are you doing? Is your answer, I'm just along for the ride. Here to have a good time. Are you able to answer and say, I'm one of those going to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm going to be part of the solution. I'm going to be among those that pray in revival. I'm not letting go of this thing. This thing is getting started. It's just getting warmed up. We're, we're, we're still in the field. We've got a ways to go, but we're, we're headed in the right direction. But we're going to need more people to join in with those that have already been praying to say, I'm going to be part of the solution. I'm going to be part. I'm going to, I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm going to believe God together with those that are praying. I'm going to trust God. Because I want to make a difference in my world. I want to believe God. Would you stand together and sing this little song? Let me sing it together. My decision. I, I have staked my claim. I have drawn a line in the sand, and I'll not be ashamed with the world behind me and the cross before. By the grace of God, I will serve. I have made my decision, I have staked my claim, I have drawn the line in the sand, and I'll not be
be ashamed with the world behind me and the cross before by the grace of God I will serve the Lord I don't want to disturb what the Lord's doing here right now but I just need to let you know there's a little issue on our campus. It's just a little issue. It's called water. If you write it H2O, it's really small. But it appears that there is no water anywhere on the campus. We had an issue with that this morning or was it yesterday morning yesterday morning thought the pipes had froze but it was a pump malfunction so we went back and tried the pump and it may be the pump that's out there in the well it's down there a few hundred feet it's not a good time of the year to pull up your pump by the way always good to prime your pump but it's bad time to pick it up I'm not sure the cold weather not enough snow on the ground. If the line between the front lawn and the tank behind me has froze, I don't know. But I tell you, who knows? I know who knows. It wasn't Brother Gamel because he told me he didn't know. <laughs> it wasn't Brother Kovar because he doesn't know either. And we're going to do a little trial and error to try to find our way through it. But he knows. And he's the giver of wisdom. So we can get to the problem and get it fixed. Would you pray right now for these people that are working in the cold trying to make this happen for you? Would you, would you just hold in the Lord right now? Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Give these men wisdom. Give them understanding. Help them to discover what's wrong. Help us to get it working. Lord, you know our campus needs water. <laughs> yes, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Make a way, make a way, make a way. I don't know how long this issue will last, but let me just give you some practical advice. If you've got a bucket, I'd fill it with as much snow as I could, take it back to my room, I'd let it melt. I would not use that to brush my teeth. But you'd have some water to flush the toilet. You'd have some water to Maybe if it looked clear enough, you could wipe, wipe your face off with it in the morning. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a lot better to think ahead and start tonight with a bucket. Because if you decide in the morning you want to do that to wash your face, it's going to take a little while for it to melt. It's going to be one cold sponge bath. I can tell you that right now. Just a little word of advice. Tonight. There's really nothing to go back out there to. I want you to do a little more praying with me. If you've decided tonight, I know where I'm standing. I know whose I am. And I'm going to be doing the what he's asked us to do. I'm tired of telling people how bad it is. I'm tired of telling people how rough it is. I know the election didn't go the way I wanted it to. But I'm not going to spend my days grumbling and complaining. I refuse. I'm going to be the one of those that do the praying. Touching heaven. That God had helped me to make a difference in the world I live in. If that's you, when we sing this song, would you come and stand with me in this altar? We've spent a whole day in this place praying. I'm not going to keep you very long tonight, but come as we sing it now. I have made my decision. I have staked my claim. I have drawn a line in 
the sand and I'll not be ashamed with the world behind me and the cross before by the grace of God I will serve the Lord oh I have made my decision begin to worship him as you sing it let him know this is a prayer coming out of your heart in the sand and I'll not be ashamed with the world behind me and the cross before by the grace of God I will serve the Lord by the grace of God I will serve the I know we prayed long and hard today. I know we spent hours in here talking to God. Do you have one good prayer left in you yet? I mean, one storm heaven kind of prayer. You got one left in you there somewhere. You just pour your heart out to God. Tell God, that's me. I'm on the side of right. That's me. I want to make a difference. That's me. I'm making a decision right here in front of the whole school. I'm making a decision. I'm standing here. I'm standing on the side of right. I want to do what's right. Would you make your commitment to God in prayer right now in Jesus' name? Our Heavenly Father, right now, we stand here in the presence of the Most High God. We know whose we are. We are the called. We are your people. We are the ones you've chosen. We've come for the what, Lord, to pray, to seek your face to call upon heaven Lord we're here to make a difference in our world and you said if we call you'd answer if we called you'd hear hear us tonight oh God as we call hear us tonight as we call upon your name let the power of God make a difference in our lives let the spirit of God rise up within us we dedicate ourselves. We consecrate ourselves.